welcome dear students welcome to today's online class on uv visible spectroscopy today we discuss how to calculate lambda max of alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds which we can simply call enons in the previous class we have discussed about calculation of lambda max for conjugated dyes based on woodward fisher rules the same empirical rules can be used for calculating lambda max of enones now as in the case of dienes here also we have some set of standard values which we should know based on which we can calculate lambda max of various molecules first let us look into the standard values which has two parts as you know one is the base value we should fix the basic compound and take the base value if the compound is acyclic that means open chain or six membered ring ketone cyclic ketone which which is six membered ring base value 215 nanometer if it is an aldehyde open chain aldehyde of course aldehyde cannot come in the cyclic part part of the ring it is 207 for five membered ketone value is a little bit lesser 202 nanometer then we will add the increments see many of the increment values are same as in the case of dienes here if it is an exocyclic double bond you know what is exocyclic double bond it is 5 nanometer we will add for a double bond extending conjugation okay this is not correct we should add 30 nanometer not 5 for a homo annular diene this is a special point here if your compound is homo diene compound and also it is a enone the base uh, value we will consider based on the enone or ketone and for an homo annular diene uh, factor we will add 39 nanometer for the common being homo annular for alkyl substituent or ring residue here it there is a difference not that in the case of diene we will simply add 5 nanometer for each alkyl substituent or ring residue but here it is different it is position dependent if it is at alpha position we will add 10 for beta it is 12 for gamma and higher positions we will add 18 okay let us apply these rules to some molecules some examples the first one look at this this is a alpha beta unsaturated ketone see this is a ketone part and you know commonly we will put the positions like this is alpha with respect to this ketone functional group of course this is also alpha but you know this is the uh, uh, conjugated part this is beta it goes like this correct uh so you can so this is a basic compound alpha beta and such for the ketone or what we call enone ene non and it is conjugated so what is the base value we take so we'll take the base value first it is coming under acyclic ketone so 2 and 5 is the base value based on this and then we add the increments increments on adding increments what are the things here there is no exo it is not a ring compound no exocyclic double bond no extended conjugation is there we have only the substituents to add see at alpha there is no substitution at beta carbon there are two substitutions right so it is alkyl groups at beta there are two so two into what is the value at beta 12 so it is 24 adding the two what you get 239 nanometer right so this is the first example we go to the second one now 
The next one is this a cyclic common retake fused ring system and this is the molecule. Okay, let us go to the calculations. The basic compound, the parent compound can be taken as a six-membered ketone, right? This is a ketone, right? Alpha, beta, and saturated ketone. So, this is the basic part of the compound. Okay. So, what is the base value? Base value is again 2 and 5. Then, increments. Increments. See? Is there exocyclic double bond? Yes. See, this double bond is exocyclic to the ring. Right? This is exocyclic double bond. So, exocyclic double bond, we will add 5. Then, there is another double bond in conjugation extended. Extended conjugation. Remember, whenever there is increase in conjugation, there is bathochromic shift. So, for this double bond, we will add. So, extended conjugation, we will add another 30 nanometer. Okay? And then, what more? Finally, there is no alkyl substitution, but there is ring residue that is treated as alkyl substitution, right? So, what are the number of substituents? You have to be very careful in identifying the positions. This is the keto group and this is the alpha carbon with respect to this keto. And then next, this is beta, this is gamma, this is delta, it goes like that. So, we have to consider this conjugated part for putting the position. Don't go this way. Right? If, see, suppose there is a double bond here also. What do you do? Nothing doing. You neglect that. This is not conjugated. Okay, of course, this is conjugated. If it is uh, somewhere here like this. If uh, th this double bond is not going to add to the lambda max, remember that. But if it comes here, of course, it is, it is conjugated this direction. Okay. So, we will take that way, we will add. So, at alpha, there is no residues, ring residue. Beta, there is a ring residue. So, this is a ring residue at beta. Gamma, there is no. Delta, the last part, this is a ring residue. So, there are two residues. At which positions? So, ring residue at beta, you have 1. So, what do you add for beta? 12. For gamma and higher, so delta, it will be 18 we add. So, what is the total? It is 10, 20, So, 280 is the lambda max value, right? isn't it? 250, 280. 280 nanometers is the lambda max of this molecule based on Woodward Fisher rule. Right? Let's go to one more example and then I will give you some homeworks. The third one is another cyclic compound okay double bond here and this is a keto group carbonyl group there is one methyl here and one here also and uh, that's all okay let's come to the calculation part the base value to which compound it belongs to again it is a six membered ring ketone so 2 and 5 is the base value now increments here you can see exocyclic double bond this is exocyclic to this ring and no more exocyclic double bond so it is exocyclic double bond we'll add 5 then extended conjugation is there yes this double bond see this is our alpha beta unsaturated ketone the base value is based on this part of the structure and this double bond is in addition 
we add extended conjugation add another 30 then a very special case here see this is homo annular diene compound for this homo annular diene you know in the previous class we discussed that if there are two conjugate double bonds in the same ring that is called homo homo means same homo annular annular means ring for that we add 39 for homo annular part finally ring residue ring residue we have to fix the positions now see this is the carbonyl group with respect to which this is alpha carbon this is beta this is gamma this is delta how many residues see at alpha there is one beta gamma none delta one correct see it so you have to be very careful in fixing these ring residues here because you have to fix the position of carbon as alpha beta gamma first then you fix, put the values so for alpha what is the value for ring residue it is 10 for delta it is 18 let us add all these it comes to 7 3 4 11 317 isn't it 20 to 50 89 89 7 317 nanometer is the lambda max is it clear so this is interesting how to calculate lambda max of various molecules of two classes we discussed now in the previous video we have discussed that of dienes and here it is that of enones two questions for practice see we will be discussing the answers of the homeworks in the google meet session remember that these are the questions for you one this one see if you find some functional groups else elsewhere at parts which is not related to this structure don't mind that the second one again a cyclic system okay this is not like this this is a five membered ring Okay, comes like this. There's a metal here. Okay, so these two you can do as homeworks. Clear? Now to end this UV visible spectroscopy, we will have one more point uh, to be discussed. That is about what I noted earlier: solvent effect effect of solvent changing the solvent during electronic or u visible spectroscopy see when you take the u visible spectra of a compound it is generally taken in solution form so you have to use some solvent when you change the solvent like if you use more polar solvent there will be some changes in the values of lambda max as well as emax what is the effect to sum up you may note that these points for an n pi star transition if you use more polar solvent you can see that there is a blue shift a slight blue shift will be there or what you call it? hypsochromic shift if it is pi pi star transition it will experience a red shift or pathochromic shift you understand see suppose you took the uv spe visible spectra of a molecule in hexane correct you know hexane is a solvent organic solvent which is non-polar and then you take the spectra in say for example in ethanol which is more polar you will find these changes slight changes 
a few nanometer. We have to explain why this happens. See, in the energy level diagram we have seen earlier that there are n pi and pi star orbitals, right? And these energy levels get stabilized due to hydrogen bonding with more polar solvent to different extent. That is why this happens. For example, let's take n to pi star transition. Why there is a blue shift? See, in the case of n to pi star transition, suppose this is n and this is pi star orbitals, for example. When you use more polar solvent, these two energy levels get stabilized. Why? Due to hydrogen bonding, right? And what happens, you know, is that in this case, the ground state is more stabilized than the excited state. Correct? This is the energy level in more polar solvent. So what happens? Energy gap increases, correct? Energy gap is increased. When energy gap increases, you know, delta equal hc by lambda, inversely related. When energy increases, wavelength decreases, right? So there is a blue shift. You understand? And if it is in the case of pi pi star transition, the common experience is a red shift. Why? Suppose it is pi pi star. Here, in pi pi star transition or in pi pi star orbitals, using a more polar solvent, the stabilization of these orbitals is now like this. The excited state is more stabilized in this case than the ground state. So what happens? Energy gap is decreasing. Right? Energy gap is decreasing now. So, you can again say that when energy decreases, wavelength increases, so there is a redshift. But a very valid point is that these kinds of solvent shift is found only in the case of enons, not in the case of dienes. Remember that. Okay? In the case of enons, carbonyl compounds, only we see this kinds of solvent shift. So that's all about uh, this UV visible spectroscopy. We will have a discussion, Google Meet discussion of questions related to this area and come with the answers for the homework also and we will start the next spectroscopy, uh, organic spectroscopy that is IR or uh, vibrational spectroscopy in the next class. Till then, bye.